Our liturgy this evening begins on page two. Light and peace in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Glory, Glory to God forever and ever. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light, enkindled in our hearts, may shine forth in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. May God be with you. Let us pray. Pour into our hearts, O God, the Holy Spirit's gift of love, that we, clasping each other's hands, may share the joy of friendship, human and divine, and with your, your servant, Aylred, draw many to your community of love, through Jesus Christ the righteous, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please remain standing for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Christ. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that Jesus answered them well, he asked him, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love your, the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and beside him there is no other. And to love him with all our heart and with all our understanding and with all, our, all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as ourselves. This is much more important than, the whole, than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. In the name of God, Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier. Amen. Please be seated. Well, tonight, of course, we are not doing. We're kind of. We're kind of uh, going a little bit away from what our themes of what we've been doing lately. We are actually going to commemorate the saint whose saint it is today, the feast day today. So it's not one of our powerful women, but it was a powerful person in the Episcopal Church, nonetheless. Not other than Aylred of Revol. We have to commemorate him because we have a window even to Aylred of Revol, and so uh, he's a he's an interesting, fascinating character. So we're going to hear a little bit about Saint Aylred of Revol. All right, let's see. He was born in 1110, died in 1167, and the quote comes from him: "God is friendship. He who dwells in friendship dwells in God, and God in him." That's kind of the theme here: is friendship. We're going to hear a lot about friendship in this. Uh, in this commemoration. St. Aylred of Revol emerges from a contemporary biography and from his own writings as one of the most attractive personalities of the Middle Ages. He spent his life within the starkly penitential atmosphere of a Cistercian monastery. Now, a Cistercian monastery, we should pause here, is a very, very strict, uh, uh, their, their belief is a very strict interpretation of the rule of St. Benedict. So there's Benedictines, and then there's Cistercians. Cistercians are kind of like the Marines of the, uh, the religious orders. So they felt that uh, they were sort of like, well, we don't really feel the Benedictines from like Italy and things are kind of strict enough. We need to be even more strict than them. And we're going to follow perfectly what the rule of St. Benedict says. So that's, that's kind of what they are. They are. They're very strict Benedictines, shall we say. And they're still around, of course. 
Uh, yet it might be well said of him, as, uh, as, as he said of one of his monks, that he was friendship's child, for he spent all his energy in seeking to be loved and to love. Now that's an unusual thing you would think from a celibate monk. You would think that's probably not something that you would hear from, from this monk in this monastery, but that's really beautiful. He, his, his, all of his energy was spent in seeking to be loved and to love. Aylward was born in 1110 in Northumbria and raised in the court of the kings of Scotland. His kind and gentle manner won him much affection and he would no doubt have enjoyed a successful career in the king's service. At the age of 24, however, which was actually a bit late if you're gonna be seeking a, a monastic uh, uh, career at that time anyway, uh, uh, an errand in, North, uh, North, uh, in Yorkshire brought him to a new Cistercian monastery in Raveau. Immediately he felt the, that he had uh, found his true home. The next day he applied for entry as a monk. Aylward's rise within the monastic community was as rapid as his success in court. He eventually became abbot of Raveau and remained in that office until his death at the age of 57. During his term, the monastery grew to include over seven, uh, 600 monks, making Raveau the largest religious community in England. Now, you're kind of wondering, why would a place in England have a name like Raveau, such a French name? Well, Cistercians, were, uh, the, the, the reformation of the Order of St. Benedict was happening in France, and that's where the Cistercians came from. They came from France, and so they were a very French order, and they still remain a French order. The Trappists are still a very French order. Um, one of our most famous Trappists of all time, which Trappists are a type of Cistercian, was none other than Tom, uh, Thomas Merton. Thomas Merton was a probably the most famous uh, Trappist monk that we know of, at least in our recent uh, time. And if you ever read the works of, of Merton, or if you ever read a biography of him, you'll see that there are lots of references in French in there. He, of course, had to know French to, to stay in that monastery at Gethsemane in Kentucky. And uh, so there was, there's a long connection with France, and the, like, the mother house of the order is in France. So that, there's a big connection. And of course, you have to understand, historically, Fra France and England, they were pretty closely combined as well. Uh, no doubt this success owed much to Aylward's distinctive uh, style of leadership. He called the monastery a school of love, and he uh, encouraged the cultiva cultivation of true friendship among monks as a reflection of their friendship with and love for Christ. Traditionally, monks had been warned of the dangers of forming particular friendships. That's actually from the rule of St. Benedict. Aylward, however, believed that a monk who had uh, suppressed his natural capacity for friendship was incapable of truly knowing God. As he wrote in his treatise, Spiritual Friendship, and that's the book that he's best known for, he wrote, I call them more beasts than men who say life should be led so that they need not console anyone nor occasion distress or sorrow to anyone who take no pleasure in the good of another nor expect their failures to distress others, seeking to love no one and be loved by none. Now, that was, uh, I think, a common belief about monks. As I said, even at the beginning of my little talk, it's an unusual thing to be hearing from monks. We, this, this whole thing about love and friendship in a monastery, this is not what you would think would be the norm. But the problem that we have when we start thinking along that line is we start thinking of it from our own contemporary perspective rather than from the perspective of that time. We have to understand that at that time, for us anyway, I think we've sort of we have a lot of baggage that goes along with friendship and love. Love for us, for most of us, at least in the Western world, I think we sort of all immediately think of like a romantic love. And we don't, we certainly don't celebrate in our culture now the love that two friends can have, a, a platonic love between people. And that's exactly what Aylward is talking about here. It's a definitely a platonic, but a real friendly love. Um, you know, certainly our culture, we're uncomfortable saying to one of our friends that we love them. That would be absolutely bizarre in our culture. But at this time, Aylward is trying to say, no, this is all right to do this because there are levels of love and there are different types of love. And love between friends is actually a beautiful and good thing. 
Uh, for the last 10 years of his life, Aylward suffered terribly from gout and, and well, and they say stone. I don't know what that means. Gout and stone, like kidney stones maybe, I'm guessing. Much of the time, uh, he was unable to leave his cell in the infirmary. Nevertheless, he welcomed large groups of monks, monks, 20 or 30 at a time, to visit him in his cell uh, and even lounge on his bed. While noting his approval, his biographer, a monk named Walter, acknowledged that such affectionate intimacy was not typical of monastery decorum. There was nobody to say to them, get out, go away, do not touch the abbot's bed. They walked and they lay about his bed and talked with him as a little child, prattles with his mother. He would say to them, my sons, say what you will, only let no vile word, no distraction, uh, of uh, no detraction of brother, no blasphemy against God proceed out of your mouth. He did not treat them with the pedantic imbecility habitual in some silly abbots who, if a monk takes a brother's hand in his own or says anything that they did not like, demands his cowl, strip, and expel him. Not so, Aylred, not so. Aylred died on January 12th, 1167. His feast is celebrated in Cistercian monasteries on February 3rd, for some reason. I don't know why that would be. Um, but he's a, fascinating, uh, he's a fascinating character. And the reason, of course, we have him in our window, which is an important part of our LGBTQ ministry, is that Aylred was named the patron saint of the integrity movement, which is the, which was, I guess it still is there, but I've heard it's pretty defunct right now, at least at present, is the, uh, the integrity movement, of course, is the official organization uh, of the Episcopal Church, and he's their patron saint. And so even the illustration that Jin put in that particular window is the one that's actually from the, uh, from the, the integrity uh, organization in the Episcopal Church. Uh, I think it's a perfect, uh, he's a perfect saint to be including in, in that particular window because that's probably our most controversial window of all of them. Uh, certainly when that window went up, there was a little controversy about it, but um, it has also uh, preached a sermon, pre uh, preached evangelism, done a lot of preaching that we ourselves can't even do with our mouths right there in that, in that window. And I'm very grateful for that window. And I'm very grateful for Aylred and for the fact that his beliefs on spiritual friendship have been, have been able to cover so much in the, in, in the church as a whole and for us particularly in the Episcopal Church. Um, uh, it's amazing how, let's see, he would have written that in the 1100s, how that, how perfect and pristine those words still are to us, even after all of that time. Uh, those words on friendship are still just as fresh and new for us right now. And I'm just very grateful for Aylred. I'm grateful for everything he represented. And spiritual friendship is a good thing that we should pursue and, 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 look at and and uh, commemorate and uh, examine in our lives. Um, and we really need to get beyond some of our hangups regarding issues like friendship and love between friends. So we're going to close tonight with a prayer for Aylred. So let us pray. Oh God, whose blessed son became poor that we through his poverty might be rich. Deliver us from an inordinate love of this world, that we, inspired by the devotion of your servant Aylred, may serve you with singleness of heart and attain to the riches of the age to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. If you will please stand. And on page one, let's get the right page here. And on page three, let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and the Lord of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. During the season of Epiphany, I ask your prayers for God's people through the world. Your word is proclaimed in all the world. We pray tonight for the Anglican Communion, and especially the Episcopal Church, and for all members of this church, especially for all bishops, priests, and deacons, and for all the holy people of God. Holy God, your spirit is at work in the world and here in this congregation. We pray for this congregation of St. Stephen's that we may grow in our love of you and that our service to others may be pleasing in your sight. Holy God, Hear our prayer. you desire to free those who have no advocate. We pray for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison, and for those in any need or trouble. Holy God, Hear our prayer. Your word was revealed in the flesh in the person of Jesus. We pray for all those who seek you or a deeper knowledge of you, that they may find and be found by you. Holy God, your son Jesus found a home with Mary and Joseph. We pray for our families, either by blood or those friends who come to us as extended family. Holy God, you endure from age to age. We pray for those who have died and especially those whose faith is known only to you, that having fought the good battle on this earth, they now rest in the blessed reward of you and all saints. Holy God, hear our prayer. you hear all who call upon you. We pray for our own intentions, repeated either silently or aloud. And at this time, let us remember before God those who are especially close to our hearts at this time. Holy God, for all those in every generation in whom you, O oh God, have been honored, especially the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Stephen the Martyr, Blessed Aylward of Revol, and all saints, and for grace to glorify you in our own day. Holy God, light of the world, let your bright star stand over the place where the poor have to live. Lead our sages to wisdom and our rulers to reverence. As we travel far and fast, Lead our minds back to the wise men following your star and forward to the day when all will see your shining light. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And let us confess our sins to God and to one another. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty oh, God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And may the peace of Christ be always with you. Peace, 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 everybody. Uh, please be seated. Just a few announcements before we continue with our service. Of course, we do have a lot going on in the next couple of weeks. Uh, let's see. First and foremost, let's take a look. We have... A uh, budget meeting coming up this weekend. I know Sandy Holbrook is just so excited about budget meetings. She <laughs> loves them. She she circles it uh, the immediately after the meeting. As soon as it's done, she circles it for next year and counts the days off until that that meeting is happening again. <laughs> so we do. <laughs> she does not. That is not true in any way, shape, or form. Um, and uh, so that is happening on Saturday. So please be praying for us as we meet for uh, to plan the budget for this coming year. Uh, we're doing pretty good. I got to say, knock on wood, as far as pledges are concerned. But of course, if you haven't had your pledges in or you haven't gotten your time and talent sheet, please do that this week. That would be really helpful for our budget meeting on Saturday. So uh, I might be sending out an email tomorrow just as a little reminder and a big thank you to everybody who has pledged this year. That's a big deal. So thank you everybody who has who have pledged already.
Uh, of course, that is an anticipation of our annual meeting, which is coming up on the last Sunday of this month, uh, January 30th. So you'll be getting email, or, uh, emails, you'll be getting a lot of emails about that. You'll be getting postcards and you'll be hearing me talk about that in, uh, in sermons and whatever else and, until, well, not in sermons, but at least in announcements up until that point. So that is January 30th, of course, for our annual meeting. But even before that, we have a visit from Bishop Tom. Bishop Tom is going to come and visit us on January 23rd. And we have a nice group of people who are going to be confirmed or received or reaffirmed on uh, January 23rd. I counted seven on Sunday. So that's pretty amazing. That's a good group of people. And all of them are pretty much like in their 20s, which is also really cool. So we're really excited about that. So that will be happening uh, on uh, January 23rd. But anybody who would like to be uh, confirmed or received, or we're also doing a new member Sunday. So if you'd like to be recognized as new members, if you maybe don't want to do those other things, we're going to be doing all of that on January 23rd. So just let me know. I can make it happen for you. It's really, really painless. It is. We went over it on Sunday. I know everybody is fine with it. Not. It's going to be just fine. It'll be a lot of fun, actually. We do have a potluck on that Sunday as well. So come along, bring a little something for our potluck. That'll be good. Hey, KFC now has vegan chicken. So bring along some of that. Bring a bucket of KFC vegan chicken along. <laughs> I'm sure they. I'm sure they roast it in their vegan oil, where they don't roast. They don't put anything else, and they yeah. fry anything else in. Yeah. So I'm sure it's it's really solidly vegan through and through. But you know what? Sometimes beggars can't be choosers, and in that case, I haven't had I haven't had KFC since oh probably I don't even know the last time I had KFC back when I ate meat, of course. And so I'm kind of excited about KFC. That was a stupid announcement. I don't even know why I'm making an announcement about KFC. You can tell what's on my brain. We might go to KFC after mass tonight. We are not going to KFC after mass tonight. We are not. Um, but hey, anybody wants to bring some vegan KFC to the uh, annual meeting potluck, I will not complain about that. We won't see any there, I can tell you. They won't be there. But anyway, uh, so that is happening on the uh, 23rd of January. Uh, let's see, uh, um, if you have poems from last Palm Sunday, please bring them to church. There's a bunch of poems out there already because what we're going to do this year, and this is the first year we've been able to do it for the last couple of years, we're going to burn those palms on Shrove Tuesday. So we are going to have our Shrove Tuesday pancake supper as we do. Um, we haven't done that. We didn't do it last year and we didn't do it the year before. Did we do it the year before? We did it the year before, yes. But um, so we didn't do it last year, but two years ago seems like 18 years ago for some reason because of that whole pandemic. So we're gonna have our pancake supper. After the pancake supper, we're gonna bury the Alleluia. And after we bury the Alleluia, we're gonna go outside and we're gonna burn our palms. And we haven't done that before yet uh, in, in our liturgy. So it'll be really exciting. And those ashes from those burned palms from at, uh, Palm Sunday the year before, make the ashes for Ash Wednesday, which of course will be the day after Show of Tuesday. So come along for that. That'll be a lot of fun. But even before all that happens, I'm going on vacation. So I'm going to be on vacation February 3rd through the 20, 28th, I think it's something like that, the 28th, which is a kind of a good long time. You get a great break for me during all of that time. I don't know what you guys are going to do. You guys are going to celebrate. You'll celebrate. You're going to celebrate. Uh, can I make an announcement about something or not yet? Yeah, you want to. Okay, I'm going to. I'm going to because it's really exciting. I am actually going to come back briefly from a vacation because we have a very special event happening on right here at St. Stephen's on February 26th, right? Uh, Annette Morrow and Mark Hitterdahl are getting married. And so they're going to get married here at St. Stephen's. I know that they're inviting everybody from St. Stephen's to the wedding. It's going to be beautiful. We just got together the other night and planned the de some of the details for it anyway. And so I'm so excited about it. I'm so excited that I'm coming back from vacation to do it. And I'm very, very, uh, I'm just, I am ecstatic about it. So that's gonna be happening on February 26th. Two o'clock, I think we have the tentative time set. There'll be a lot more details about this as we get closer, but mark your calendars right now. Plan to come to that service. Uh, we had to get it done before Lent started because uh, you know we can't do, can't do weddings during Lent. So. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> poor, poor Annette was going, can we look at March? I said, no, I can't look at March. I can't, sorry. <laughs> um, so that'll be very, very exciting. Are you all excited, Annette? Absolutely. Oh, great. So anyway, that's 
Any other announcements? I think I'm missing out on something. I always say this, but walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and sacrifice to God. Blessed are you, O God of all creation, through goodness we have this bread to offer, which the earth has given and human hands have made. Become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through goodness we have this wine to offer, the fruit of the vine and work of human hands. Become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Our liturgy continues on page 7 in the booklet. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ, our Savior. From before time, you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being, sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways, but we rebelled against you and wandered far away. Yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we say, Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Supper was ending, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to his friends and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour your spirit out upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with the blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Stephen, blessed Aylred and all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God of promise, you have prepared a banquet for us. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. And at this time, let us pray for all those who cannot receive Holy Communion at this time. God of infinite mercy, we thank you for Jesus, our Savior, who feeds us and gives us eternal life. We pray for those who cannot be here at this time to consume these gifts of his, bread and uh, of his body and blood and this bread and wine. But we pray that they may receive the sacrament of Christ's presence, the forgiveness of sins, and all other benefits of Christ's passion. Grant that we may continue forever in the risen life of our Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God, now and forever. Amen. Salvation. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
on page 10. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. And may Christ's bright star enlighten your mind and your heart as you strive for equality, justice, and kindness in the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier, be with you now and always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.